Let's talk about something that I think is a little bit overused in the gym as an answer to a very big issue with people as boxers. A big thing that people do need to 100% work on is keeping their chin down. And I see this play out time and time again. I will see amateurs at a high, even a high level get away with the chin being up. And the key word is get away. They, they, they manage to still not get freaking rocked with their chin up because of a lot of other things. They have a lot of reflexes, things like that. And their opponent only has three rounds to get to them. All right, you can get away with some things like that. But inevitably, I see guys make that transition to pros and they haven't fixed that issue and it comes back to bite them at some point. Some guys make it remarkably far. far. I'll give you examples with other things that are, are deficits that don't get exposed sometimes till later. We all know and we can all agree that Deontay Wilder has a lot lacking as a boxer. He has heart, you know, he's willing to go out on his shield, obviously, as he says so often, and he's massively powerful and he obviously trains hard, but there's big holes in his technique that it took a very long time to get exposed because he was moved very well. And of course, like we know, every fighter that you know the name of now <laughs> is moved really, really well. Basically almost just like Deontay, all right? Just Deontay's a heavyweight, so it's a little bit easier to be moved and avoid things because there's not so many things to watch out for because there's not as many guys in the division as there are in like welterweight or lightweight, all right? So you can get away with a lot more for a lot longer at heavyweight because there's just less heavyweights, less competition at that size. Also think about this as well. If you're a big, strong dude, you have a lot of opportunities now in the sports world to compete uh, and get paid money. Versus back in the day, like you wanna talk about during the golden era of heavyweights, like the 70s, it, it wasn't quite the same, right? If you wanted to make actual money as a, as a pro athlete, you were, and you're big, you were gonna be a heavyweight boxer, all right? Uh, nowadays, you're big, you can do basketball, you can do football, and you can make a lot of money with those things, all right? And they have great programs that build guys into that through freaking high school and collegiate and everything else. Now, <clears throat> talking about the big chink in the armor, with the chin being up in the air. Think about it. You get hit in the throat, get hit in the tip of the chin. This is the button in boxing as I've talked about in so many videos. And you don't have to have someone that's that powerful hit you right on the tip of the chin and it at least buzz you and can set you up for a knockout or just put you on your butt. Also too, if you get hit straight on the tip of the nose, that nose, if it's hard, is gonna break. If you're like this and they hit your tip on the uh, straight on the tip of the nose, especially if you have some sweat and some Vaseline, that sucker's just gonna slide down. Uh, and the only thing that can really get it is an uppercut from here, but that's one shot, right? Or two shots, if you're thinking left and right hands, out of a whole seven, eight punches or so, okay? Targeting the head. Now, one of the answers that a lot of people will have for keeping the chin down, classic answer in a sense that it's common, but classic in the sense that I don't think it's a good answer though. So I'm not gonna say it's, it's actually classic, is tennis ball, hey, Take this tennis ball, put it under your chin. Okay, so you put it under there, you hold it down, and yes, that is definitely something that is gonna get you in the proper position. Because it's weird too, I've worked with so many people over the years that some people when you say chin down, they put their chin back and down like they're trying to take the tip of the chin right here to the throat. No, 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 you wanna bring it down to the chest. So yes, the tennis ball does help you get it in the proper position. But the tennis ball has very, very limited usage. And it, to me, it's a, it's a lazy answer to the chin down problem, all right? Because also, <clears throat> it works to have that tennis ball and, and shadow box with that tennis ball on when you're just doing movement, when you're just maybe doing a jab. But the second you start throwing any other punches that are anywhere near the same method and technique that you're gonna be doing when you're actually boxed, you're gonna have big, foundational issues. You're gonna be throwing punches, for instance, with that tennis ball under that chin, and you're like this, let's say, the second you throw a right hand and you turn your shoulders, the head's gonna be going over there. Second you throw a hook, the head's gonna be going over here. The head is stuck with that, and that's not how it works when you box. When you box, the chin pops against the shoulder here on this side. The chin pops against the shoulder here on this side. I'm here turning my body, but I'm keeping my line of vision here. I'm not going like this, which actually creates more openings too. So what is gonna encourage someone to just be like this and boom, boom, boom. But then the second, or oftentimes, when they go back to actually throwing the real punches, 
they'll go back to this number here. I've seen it happen time and time again. Guys will train, have that chin down, be good, they're perfect. And then the second they start throwing, stuff starts, stuff starts popping up. Now what's a better answer for this? Well, let me start back in the foundational place where I like to stand. And that's that as a boxer, if your coach is having to give you a lot of tricks, because that's kind of what I think it is in a sense, it is kind of like a trick, um, and a lot of these little things that like force your body to cooperate and do the right things. This is a hard thing to say, but I'm only gonna talk about the truth. You might not have what it takes to get to the higher levels. Because with anyone that I've worked with that has gone to the highest levels, all right, gone on to be a professional fighter and been successful and things like that, the amount that we've had to do stuff like that is very minimal, if at all. But the people who haven't done that are the ones that I've had to do that with the most, right? The ones where it's like I've had to, you know, tie tie something to this or, you know, force this thing to happen here and whatnot, all this craziness. That's, those are the people, the people that I've had to do that with are not very, very successful. It doesn't help them get to the next level. It helps fix some basic stuff in their arsenal and they never get beyond it. And the reason why I think that is is because they're lacking something that, that they could achieve in game possibly, all right? So if you are this person, don't think I'm telling you, hey, you just gotta accept it and you suck and that's it. What I'm saying is that what that should tell you is that as an athlete, you are not aware of your body enough. You are not in tune with your body. You are not mindful enough of what the hell is going on with your body and a great athlete is, all right? Or at least is more so. Uh, than not. So therefore, you should be able to feel and control that chin with time. It, it might be a few different reasons, like mentally and physiologically that's happening. You're too tense and stuff like that. But a great athlete is going to be able to do that, able to feel what the problem is when it's brought to their awareness by a coach or themselves, and then be able to control it. It might take some time, but they don't really need these, these band-aids or, or these these things that force them to keep the position because it's it's kind of it's kind of gimmicky. It's kind of gimmicky. It's this idea of that's like, hey, like as a boxer, we're gonna have to take your hand and and freaking duct tape it to your face, and then we're gonna take the other hand, duct tape it to your face, and you have to put a newspaper under both your elbows, and then you're gonna have to build a shed over you that's gonna keep you down a little bit. And it's funny because I'm actually using some nuances that people talk about with great fighters that they use to help them, the stories, the mythologies. But at the end of the day, I'm just speaking from my experience coaching, that people I've had to do that with are more often than not, not very successful past a very mediocre level because they're stuck in this almost like infantile state as an athlete, as a fighter, where they're not becoming self-reliant. They're becoming dependent on all this other stuff to force them to do the right thing. They're becoming dependent on coach to force them to do the right thing versus them just doing the right thing. Because as anyone will tell you that's a coach, the most ideal position that we wanna be in is to be outside that ring and basically be saying nothing, right? That would be my ideal dream as a coach. Not where I have to go in there and do all the dramatics and everything else that you see coaches do sometimes and I'm not downing on them for that because sometimes you're in a situation where it does almost call for that. But the most ideal place to be as a coach is to be sitting out that ring, be like, say nothing, good work. Cause your fighters doing everything they should be doing or most of all they should be doing. And maybe you give them a couple little tips here and there. It's a relaxed corner. It's not this, you know, do or die craziness extreme. That's not the ideal. That's not what you should be striving for creating as a fighter in your corner or as a coach. And if your fighter forces you in that position as a coach all the time, you might wanna reconsider. Because if it's like pulling teeth to just get them to basically do some just simple things, uh, what, what's it gonna be like at the next level? Well, the answer is they'll never get to that level. <laughs> you can maybe uh, dress them up. <laughs> you can put lipstick on the pig and you can throw them at that level. Uh, and then yeah, well, inevitably, we see it all the time. They're just gonna get beat up or knocked out or whatever and not be very successful. And I, I've, I, this is me speaking from, from 
a decade plus of hitting my head against the wall with some guys that I see talent, right? I see ability. And there, there's will there somewhere of, of them wanting to succeed. But not enough will, I guess, because it's continually me having to hold their hand. And the situations where guys are successful with that are very seldom. Very, 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 very seldom. It's not worth the trouble. All right. But to answer the chin thing, <laughs> now, early on in a boxer, to help them kind of fast track and work on this, or just someone, again, that's just wanted to learn the art of boxing and to help have them keep their chin down better than the ball, to me, the ball is a cheap answer. Because again, like I said, it works for the, maybe the feel of what that feels like for just a moment or to move around. But again, the moment they start throwing punches, the chin's gonna be popping up. And more often than not, if you have trouble with your chin popping up or being up, it's, it's probably not in your initial stance if you have any base as a boxer or any fundamentals. It's when you start trading or throwing punches, right? So what I've done, taking a helmet, taking the cup, because I've had guys spar, because again, think about it. When is the time that they're probably doing it? If someone listens at all and, and tries to be better, they probably got their chin down shadow boxing. I mean, because really, if you're that ridiculously uh, uh, stupid as a, a court in, in your coordination, again, how good of a boxer are you gonna be? Hitting the bag, shadow boxing, they can probably keep the chin down. But when does the chin start popping up? It starts popping up in sparring. So an in-house sparring, when we're sparring with other members of our team, right? We're not, you know, going against other gyms and everything else, and there's some danger with that. Uh, they have their cup on, right? They have their headgear on. I take hand wraps, tie it to the bottom chin, chin strap of the headgear, and tie that down to the cup, all right? So now, uh, everything's forced down, and they can still, because literally I, I have a hand wrap tied from here to here, I'm forced down like that. And when I throw a punch, boom, this stays here, right? I'm here, this stays here. This doesn't track with my chest so that I'm like that or like that as I throw punches. Make sense? And then that allows me to literally work on and improve the thing that is the problem in the place that it is the problem, all right? So that, that, that's an extreme measure, but you get to take my word for it, it works. If you like this video, make sure you click like, subscribe, comment, share. See you on the next one.